What's up everyone, this is Andre from Indie Arts Midwest and in this video we will be setting up a split pivot system for a bike suspension. Now, this won't always be a part of all of my videos, but I did want to at least show the editing side of things because sometimes you import a mesh that isn't exactly ready to go and you need to do a little work. So having a little prep definitely helps keep things in check. And I also wanted to point out that during this process was also the time that I decided where the pivot points were going to go based on all the pieces that were available. And luckily for me, there weren't a lot for one and two. It was pretty obvious to understand where the pivot points needed to go based on what was going on. You can kind of see, okay, this is going to bend that and that's going to bend this. So then it should all work together in one big linked system. So that being said, it did take some time to prepare, but the best part about this setup was definitely the split pivot system. So definitely a lot of your basics of checking certain pieces to look for imperfections, going into edit mode, separating those, joining them up with their respective pieces with control J, merge by distance, edge split if you would prefer to use that. I do with a shade smooth that helps make the mesh look the way I think it's supposed to. And of course, selecting certain parts of the mesh in order to add your pivot points and also parenting the pieces respective to how the pivot system should be set up. That actually required for me to go onto a Google search and watch a couple of YouTube videos as well to understand how the split pivot system works. And it's really interesting. Um, I'm not big into the cyclist hobbies, but I do appreciate the engineering behind a sophisticated bike setup. So definitely grateful for learning the information. And once all the pivot points are correct and everything is properly parented, we can then move on to setting up our object constraints. All right, so I'm going to add a transform constraint to this piece here. We're going to give this a custom name, which should be frame, but I'm naming it body for now. Extrapolate local to local. I'm starting with minus one and one and on map two. I'll set rotation and X, Z, Y instead of X, Y, Z. I'm going to start with three and minus three, just to see what kind of movement I can get. Okay, yeah, that looks all right. I'm seeing a little bit of movement here. Moving on to this piece. Transform, select the body. Extrapolate, local to local, map two. I'm gonna start with minus one to one and map from, set rotation. I'm gonna, again, try to do something similar to the previous piece and set the X, Z, Y on rotation and start with a three and minus three. Again, just to see what kind of movement I can get out of the movement out of the Z axis from the body. I'm going to move on to this piece. Another transformation. Body, extrapolate, local to local. Map from, I'll start with minus one to one. 
map two, X, Z, Y, and of course, set as rotation. And I'll start with a three and minus three. Just test it out. Now, of course, these settings are giving poor results because the main goal is to get things moving, not necessarily to get it all perfectly lined up. That's going to take time and a lot of tweaking back and forth of the settings. So, so you're going to see me doing a lot of testing of the movement in order to get an idea on where I'm at for the rotations. So I changed it to 18 to minus 18 on the Z. And I thought that was correct. And I was close. Same thing with this piece. Messing around with the settings just kind of seemed a bit off. But this specific uh, ratio seemed to be in proper alignment. And the same goes for this piece. I have the Z set to 12.5. And I thought I was correct and I was really close, like extremely close, actually. So at the time, I mistakenly set it to 10 but it gets changed later and that's why I'm including these portions in the video because the trial and error process was so tedious and it definitely matters and you may run into this these issues because your bike may not be the same scale as mine I've mentioned that many times throughout quite a few of my videos because that does factor into how these settings will work This seems like it's all right. This one, not so much. Close, but no. And it's kind of hard to tell also. Now, at this point, I did decide that I was going to use this later on because of its complexity. So I decided that it was time to scale it down a little bit more so that I could kind of get it into what would be standard blender scale. Everything seems to be working still, no problem. So I'll just move on. Here I have this set for five and minus five, and this is where I was extremely close to the proper setting for this particular rig. And the same goes for this piece and this piece. So all three were basically within range of the proper setting to not go too far over and too far under, just like a nice, uh, like a, a safe zone. But I hadn't quite figured it out yet. So now I'm changing it to 14. And it's good to go here. You can see the rotation looks all right. It's not terrible. This piece changed to nine and minus nine and it's good to go. Again, not too extremes, kind of dampening the rotation on that larger piece. And now it seems safe to move on to the piston portion. So I'm going to clear the parent, keep transformation, select the lower piston section, and control P to parent, and rotate, test it out. 
also move the body to ensure that it is indeed parented and not moving around with everything else. Then select the upper piece, add an object constraint, be transformation of course, extrapolate body local to local, map from minus one and one Z axis and map two. Thinking that that would be a better fit I set it to minus 0.22 and 0.22, which was incorrect because it actually did the opposite of that effect, which was overcompensated and moved down further than I needed. So then I changed the map from location to minus three and three. Tried that out. That was a much smoother transition. So even though I started with minus 0.22, I ended with on the z-axis, minus 0.28, min to 0.28 max. Constraint transformation, select body, local to local, extrapolate, map from. I'm gonna set to minus three to three. And the map two, I'm gonna set rotation, and of course, X, Z, Y, and as you can see, we get the same rotations as we were before. So in this case, I just needed to be very subtle. So I'll start with a three and a minus three. Test it out. I was extremely close to a ratio that was going to work for me. But during my editing, I jumped to minus 0.12 and 0.12, hoping that might help. But ultimately then settled on minus 0.28 and 0.28. And that was a good ratio. If you take a look at the smaller triangle piece, you can see the way that it lines up very well with the top of the upper piston portion as it rotates downward, even when it's in an extreme angle, it's still lining up really well. And that is what I was going for, so. And the same thing happens with this. I have it at 12.2, and thinking that I'm helping the issue, I change it to 10.6 and minus 10.6. Now this one I got correct, the minus 4.9 and 4.9, were a good ratio, and that one definitely stuck. which is where I decided to go back to instead of 12.2, 12.3. And in this case was a good ratio as well. Not perfect, but good enough. Okay, test it out. So the last step is I wanna add some limits on the Z location of the body. So I'm gonna add a limit location constraint to the body and check Z and Z. I started with five, which is really extreme. and then change to one. That seems a little more reasonable, but as you can see, it goes a bit overboard. So I'm gonna dial it down a little bit, 
That seems okay. Maybe a little bit more. So I'm not really sure how locked in I want it to be on the upward motion. I'm going to dial it back. So not a whole lot of movement here, you know, just kind of keep a little bit of restriction for the tutorial. As I said, if it were a lengthier setup, then I would probably not have this set and because I'd have more structure behind it as an entire bike. And luckily for you, I did make a whole bike tutorial. So I'm actually doing the editing for that now. So feel free to check that out when I post it. I hope you found this information useful as I've had a lot of fun learning different aspects of how to set this up. I appreciate all of your views. Be sure to tune into my updated bike tutorial 2.0 where I also feature a spring suspension in addition to this piston setup on a full bike. Don't forget to like and subscribe and as always, thanks for watching.